Okay. So uh, if you have the area of a circle, everyone knows it's pi, it, everyone knows it's pi r squared, right? Uh, and the question is, what is dA dr? What's the answer? What which is? What do you get? Anyone? Yes. Pi two r. Yeah, pi times two r, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like this. What what is x squared prime? Two x. That everyone knows, right? Yeah. What is r squared prime? Two r. Two r, right? What is pi r squared prime? Well, pi is just a number, right? So that goes out and. So the answer is, uh, this is 2 pi r. Usually you want to write 2 before pi. Okay, what about this one? What's the answer to this? Yes? Uh, it's 4 thirds pi 3 over the second. Okay, that's correct. But can't you simplify it? Yeah, what do you get if you do that? 4 pi r squared. That's exactly right. Okay. So if you differentiate r cubed, you get 3 r squared. But because there is a 3 there in the denominator, when you cancel this 3 with this 3, you end up with 4 pi r squared. Okay. So as I said, uh, I, I said writing this, that the hint is that these are really simple questions. You probably wouldn't even attempt it if I didn't tell you that. But it is simple, right? You agree, right? It's a simple question. Uh, but here's a harder question. What is the geometric meaning of the answers of Q2 and Q3? You see this 2 pi r and 4 pi r squared. Is there a geometric meaning? 2 pi r is the circumference, isn't it? That's actually wonderful. I didn't expect anyone to answer. That's correct. Yeah, 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle. What about 4 pi r squared? Do you know anything about that, 4 pi r squared? Well, that's just... Yes? Surface area. Surface area of the sphere. That is 4 pi r squared. Okay. And the next question would be, why would those appear here? And there's actually a good geometric reason for that. So here's how you make sense of the answers here. Uh, but before that, let me ask the question. What is the meaning of the derivative? I'll just say it. What's the meaning of the derivative? The slope of the tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change. There's two means, okay? and they're the same thing. Newton realized that they're the same thing. Right? It's the slope of the tangent line and instantaneous rate of change. Uh, but when you write when you write d a d r, this notation, which we call Leibniz notation, because it was the mathematician Leibniz who first invented this notation, it has a meaning closer to the uh, instantaneous rate of change, and to understand why you want to think about this quantity dr. So uh, one of the things that we will be doing in calculus 2 is, in calculus 1, when we did the derivatives, you never thought to think of these as separate. Well, in a sense, you did when we were doing the chain rule. But usually, we didn't want to say dr and da are separate things that made sense. But now we're going to say, uh, talk about these quantities as if they actually have a meaning. And here's the actual meaning for it. This is, dr is what we call an infinitesimal quantity. It's an infinitesimal. It's a very hard word. What does that mean? It's infinitely small. That's what it means. Infinitesimal means infinitely small. Very, very close to zero, okay? Infinitesimal change of r. That's what it means. And you're taking these 
ratios of two quantities, right? You're taking the ratio of an infinitesimal ch change of A with respect to an infinitesimal change of R. And it has some additional meaning that uh, this definition alone does not capture, which is the following. Look at this A and R. They're related, right? <coughs> R is what we call an independent variable. A is what we call the dependent variable. A depends on R. In other words, if you change the value of R, what's, what's going to happen? A is going to change. In our case, in this specific case, if you increase the radius, of course, the area will increase, right? So now, this has the following meaning. If you increase the radius ever so slightly, a very small quantity, an infinitesimally small quantity, if you increase them, area will also increase ever so slightly. It's not going to increase by much, but it will increase just ever so slightly. And the question is, what is the ratio between the two, two values? You understand that? Okay. Can you make sense out of that? Okay. You increase R ever so slightly, just tiny, tiny bit, and you see how much A increased, and you take the ratio. Okay. Now, normally, you're not allowed to have 0 over 0. That's what we call undefined, right? But, uh, and that's why it took a long time for people to figure out calculus. Right? So many people knew that something like calculus could happen, but they didn't know they could actually build an entire math out of it and do other cool things with it. Uh, but it was Newton first, and then Leibniz later that uh, figured out that these values alone, they are close to zero values, so they don't make any, they don't have any meaning, but if you take the ratios, they have some finite meaning. All right, so once you, once you understood the notation, now let's actually draw a picture to see why this has to be 2 pi r. So let's draw a picture. And here's the radius r circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase the radius ever so slightly. Here's dr. Then <coughs> the circle will increase. And this portion right here will be the increase in the area. You agree? This portion will be dA. And now let's try to calculate the increase in area. Well, here's an idea. You cut this area, cut it right here, right? And because dR is so small, it's a thin strip, right? So you unwrap it. And if you unwrap it like this, then the height will be what? dR. dR will be the height. What will be the base length? The circumference. It will be the circumference of the, the, the circle. Do you agree? Right? If you unwrap it, the base length will be the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r, times dr. Now you divide both sides by dr. What do you get? You get dA over dr as 2 pi r. Without having to do any calculus. So you can actually figure this out without learning the rule that x squared prime is 2x. You actually just figure it out by geometry. All right, let's go to the second example. Uh, this time you have a bowl of radius r. So it's like a bowl of radius r. So here it's a R. And again, you want to increase this radius ever so slightly by dr. Increase by just a bit. And you get this bigger volume, right? And it, it's harder to draw because that it's now 3D, but I'll just draw it like this, but I, I really mean it's the shell that's that's covering the entire sphere. Now, think about what the formula for dv must be. Well, uh, if you take the surface area of the sphere and you thicken it just by dr, you're going to get the volume of increase. Do you agree? So dv must be surface area times dr. And then if you divide by dr both sides, you get that dv over dr must be the surface area. Now this is very cool because you may have been sitting here today 
maybe knowing that the volume of this, the sphere of radius r is 4 thirds pi r cubed, but you forgot that this, what the surface area formula is. Okay. But did you know that all you have to do is just take this and differentiate to get the surface area? Yeah. Now, I, when I first figured this out, it gave me the chill because, of that, because it was like, wow, you can actually do that? You can actually find the surface area just by differentiating? There's a hidden pattern that I didn't know about? That was like a real revelation for me. So this, this is a, uh, these are quite cool phenomena. Yeah, you have a question? Um, is that going to be, so the surface area and the circumference, is it going to be of the original sphere or, or of the new sphere? Like the oh, uh, it's actually the original sphere because dr is like, so, so I know what you're saying. So because you're, you're thickening it, uh, you might be worried about what's the, the thickened sphere would have bigger surface area, right? right. Uh, but because this increase in the radius is practically zero, mm -hmm. you say that there is no difference. Okay. 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 It's it's harder to, to it's it's a hard concept to think like this infinitesimal increase. Mm -hmm. uh, you're giving meaning to something that's zero, in some sense, and you're saying that they themselves don't have any meaning, mm -hmm. but once you divide, they suddenly start having meaning. Okay. All right, uh, now, okay, so, so I, I want to say this because I wanted to use the same kind of principle to explain what fundamental theorem of calculus is. Right? Uh, but before I move on to this next topic, I just want to uh, put it out there that uh, there is actually a, a YouTube shorts video that I created to talk about the, uh, the surface area of a uh, of a tube, it's called a torus. So if you have a torus where the cross section is a radius r circle, so this is this is r, and there's a bigger circle. If you collect, if you connect the centers of the circles, there's, there's a bigger circle with cap, capital R, right? Then that's called a torus, and you can actually uh, figure out the volume form volume formula for the torus and also the surface area. And you can, you can get the surface area of this torus using the same exact principle. And it's, it's a YouTube short, so it's less than one minute. So if you click on it, and also click like, that will be wonderful.